Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Commander 8 Code Studio session. Now we are going to take a look on exercise 3 where we are going to add some user tasks and form to our design process and make a very short iterative first version of, um, of the age that we process we've talked about. So in the GitHub with me you can find a nice little example and in the end you do have also uh, the possibility to check out our BPMN and DMN resources as well as the form which can be used in order to deploy it to um, operate or to ZZB process engine. To get started let's open up our modeler. So that's once again the web modeler. I do have my Cloud Code Studio project in here and let's get started with our um, H that we process we find that's the very easy version we have created during the second exercise so for me in order to show you what has been done in here and we are going to now use this exemplary process to to define some user tasks and to make it really deployable so therefore let's let's make it a bit easy um, we do say send message to infected person send quarantine info or send quarantine quarantine message to infected person making it a user task then we are going to say check if per person is still human this is also going to be a user task so keep in mind we are only using user task as of now and then additionally we do want to have a check so an exclusive gateway, if the person is still healthy, um, we'll check just iteratively and yeah, at a certain point in time, we are then going to, yeah, let's do it like this. Is healthy, yes and no. And that's all we need for now. So it should be a very simple first version we want to automate only using user tasks and forms. So as you do see right here, we do have two kind of forms we need to create and that's the first thing I'm going to do. So back to Code Studio, um, back to the project overview and now I can create a new form. And this form should have the possibility to just maybe contain, um, yeah, a radio button, which tells me whether um, whether I have sent out the message which was which I was asked to send out as a clerk. So let's say send out message to quarantine and then we can have like the value called yes which is equal to true and we do have another one which is like no which is false and this would map to the process variable called um, message send let's do something like this pretty easy and of course I also would like to show you how this is represented so having this nice UI is always fancy but in the end that's kind of a JSON file we do have here so you can see um, all the information we have passed into there into the form is also serialized like this and I could copy this and add it manually to my user task but there's also another possibility so going back to my H that V process find I now have the possibility to click this little button right here in order to add our form it is going to be displayed in here so just as a recommendation we can apply this and we do see the form JSON configuration added into here that's perfectly fine. Next up, we can do a similar thing for our next user task to check if the person is still human. So maybe let's just duplicate this, open it up, and then we can change like is uh, like this. We can change the label to is the person still healthy? And if this is the case, we do have another variable. We can say, for instance, if it's a yes, it's true. If it's no, it's a false. So as previously, but we should like change this 
edit name, still healthy. And once this is done, we can again close this, going back to this form right here and refresh before we then can add our form to here. Awesome. Now there is one last thing we need to take into account before deploying our diagram. So we do have this outgoing or this exclusive gateway here. So that means we need to make a decision based on some data we've got. Um, and clicking on these outgoing sequence flow, we can add the condition. And we could say, for instance, um, we do have the variable healthy. And this must be false in this case, since the person isn't healthy. Um, and of course, the same applies to our other sequence flows. So this needs to be added to both of them. So it would be like true in here. And having done so, we can now deploy this diagram. Let's do this with our new cluster we have created in the previous exercise so I can deploy it. And yeah, it has been deployed successfully. Going to operate, I should now be able to see that we at least have a process definition in here. Let's quickly update. Still nothing won't show up. Is this, oh yeah, right here it is. So that's the process we have deployed right now, as you can see. Mm, and now it's time to start an instance. So we don't need any variables to pass in here. That's optional, but we can just quickly start a new instance on my cluster for this specific process. So going into operate, I now should be able to simply see a running process instance right here. So we are waiting for a clerk to pick this up and to work further on, on the process. Um, so let's go back to our um, cloud console, another one, applications, task list, and right there you can see the user task. Wonderful, I can claim it. So now people know that I'm working on this and I can say, hey, um, I send out the message that the person uh, should go into quarantine right away so I can complete the task. And then hopefully we are going to move to that part, to that step. So let's refresh once again and yeah. We are going to have a next task in here in the task list. You can see it right away. Claim it once again. And let's say the person is not healthy. Let's test it. Completing the task should lead to the process uh, to terminate. Um, let's check if this is correct in operate. And yeah, it has been completed. Wonderful. Um, now we could also create a new instance to check whether this kind of loop does work correctly. And then we have drafted a very rudimentary initial version of our process only using user tasks and forms. And of course, we have added all those additional technical properties in here, um, which we should have done as mentioned. Cool. Having done so, we are finished with our exercise three already. Um, so everything is done by now. You can experiment a little bit more around. And of course, if you don't get it to work as said, go up, go into the resource file, and there you do have all the diagrams and the forms you need. And simply clone the repository and then you can upload it into your modeler by simply using this upload files button. And that's how you can get it started even though you something hasn't worked. And of course, feel always free to Simply write comments down below the video if you do have any further questions. If you don't get it running, I'm really happy to help you out there.